We've had 15 races and it all comes down to this. 29 laps of the Yas Marina circuit to decide who is going to be the 2025 Drivers and Constructors World Champions. It's us v George Russell, it's Lamborghini v Mercedes. 5 points the gap in the Constructors, 17 points the gap in the drivers this is how the championship lines up and this is the palpitations so if we outscore george we are world champions if we fail to score george needs to finish at least inside the top two if george wins we need to finish at least p5 to be champions by five points if george finishes p2 we need to finish at least p9 to be champions by two points if george finishes outside the top two it doesn't matter where we finish we are world champions for a second time and the constructors as well will sort itself out along the way i'm sure as well the most important thing though is the drivers so this is the grid then for the title decider it's lewis hamilton and lando norris on the front row and all british front row then it's the two championship rivals us and george russell piastri and max verstappen joe and leclerc stroll and gasly bottas and fernando alonso in his final race Sainz and ocon sonoda and fittipaldi lawson and nick de freeze albon and Hauger, and on the final of the grid is logan Sargent and kevin magnuson Right, this championship is still alive and there's still a chance we can win it. So get out there and bring the title home. Come on! So great inspirational words then by Mark. And this is it for us then. We're doing the one-stopper. Starting on that medium's going to the hard. Don't really fancy a two-stopper. I don't really want to take the risk if something goes wrong. But starting P3 and we're ahead of George which is the main thing we've got to keep behind him then we don't really have to worry about where he finishes compared to where we finish this is our qualifying lap to get us to P3 I felt it was a fairly strong lap but wasn't strong enough for pole position so as we come round then on the formation lap to get in our group place very much the calm before the storm when those five red lights go out the two mercedes on soft so debating what they're doing but this is it then 29 laps to decide the title the gap 17 points and we're racing in the desert and we've got a good start but so has george he's already linked us lando's gone backwards and George really squeezes us into the pit wall there but it's a Mercedes 1-2 we've came one place into P3 from P3 so we haven't, we haven't lost or gained anything but now down into the old hairpin it's a Mercedes 1-2 surely Lewis has to be pulled out the way to let George win because it means the difference between us having to finish P5 and is having to finish P9. George then to the outside tries to go into the chicane. Now out of the second chicane, can he have another run on his teammate? This is honestly more critical than George getting us at the start. As we head down towards a new section of the track, round that bank curve, in the background, Max Verstappen challenging our teammate for P4. Piastri goes right to the inside, Max now to the outside, he's going to break later to do our teammate round the outside, up the inside in the second part of the chicane, who gets the exit low, it's now a drag race in the background, Lando Norris is having a look, to the outside goes Piastri, Lando Norris now trying to make it free wide as they go into that banked left hander, Lando backs out of it, Piastri and Max Verstappen still side by side round the outside guys Max Verstappen he's still on the outside Piastri's not giving it up but eventually he has to and Max Verstappen puts his Red Bull up into P4 looking for a, a decent end to the season after what's been a very poor one for them this is the two Mercedes are going wheel to wheel 
Mercedes needs to pull Hamilton out of the way. Round the outside goes George on his teammate. He needs to get this job done. Team orders surely have to be in place here. George on the inside. Hamilton tries to hold around the outside. Hamilton then has the inside line again. George still on the outside. One of them's going to have to give up. George can't take the risk. And George backs out of it. And this is allowing us just about to stay in touch with the two Mercedes because they're always going to be quicker on their soft tyres so with them battling we were just staying within a second of the two Mercedes but here comes George again he's got a better run this time he's passed to this teammate before he even gets to the chicane but Hamilton's gonna break later side by side they go through the chicane who gets the exit now George finally gets the job done Hamilton has got the better exit to go to the inside and retake the lead of the Grand Prix. George now tries to keep it pinned down the inside. Round the outside, Lewis Hamilton goes, keeps his teammate behind. What are Mercedes doing here? I mean, I know you can't deny Lewis Hamilton a victory, but in these circumstances, he has to. That time, though, it looks much easier for George Russell, maybe Mercedes finally came to their senses and George Russell takes the lead of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix and now he's in prime position if anything happens to us in this race but I was just concentrating so much of not letting those two Mercedes out of my sights the gap stayed just over a second and then battling really did keep us in it but we did have fairly decent pace on these mediums but just not quite enough to stick with those soft compound tyres behind lap 8 now this is Piastri who's been right at the back of Max Verstappen since he overtook him this time though he's pulling to the inside and he's going to retake P4 in this race that Red Bull not got the straight line speed compared to it Piastri's Lamborghini and it starts pulling in bars and now Max Verstappen is going to be left vulnerable to the McLaren of Lando Norris Lando's on the outside is he going to go round the outside of the bank corner yes he is all the way round the outside goes Lando Norris and goes ahead of Max Verstappen lap 10 now and the two Mercedes are still going at it and what to now re caught the back of his Mercedes teammate and he's re really going for the lead of the Grand Prix and he retakes the lead of the Grand Prix going into the chicane they're side by side Lewis Hamilton retakes the lead of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix and he's now making this life very difficult for his Mercedes teammate George Lowe retakes the lead and chops him off big time at the hairpin further back though this is Kevin Magnussen pulling off with a big engine blowout and is out of the final race of the season that has been another shocking season for Haas still it score a point they've still got one opportunity this season as into the pits comes Lewis Hamilton so what size is he going on? We crossed the line and this was the stage of the race where I realised that this was no way a two stop race as he puts on the mediums. I was it was one of those races where I was concentrating so hard to stick the Mercedes I didn't actually realise what lap we were on. So I thought as Piastri goes down the inside of us and nearly overtakes us. I thought, well, let's try and drag this out. We know the softs can do 12 laps. They should keep going on these mediums. We'll be very quick at the end. As we now battle our teammate, I was screaming at Piastri, telling him to stay behind me. We don't need to do what the two Mercedes have been doing and fighting each other and possibly risking it all in a way. Plus in terms of the constructors as well, as George Russell now pits the end of lap 13, so we will take the lead of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix 
from our team that behind them really that's battling is making us lose time to not only the Mercedes of George but also to Hamilton who's coming round and as George exits the pits where is Lewis Hamilton then and Lewis Hamilton has free overtaken his teammate Mercedes doing the undercar on their own championship possibly winning driver what is going on here in Abu Dhabi it's to the inside now Piastri goes on us this is the worst timing for us to have the battle because both Mercedes have boxed and we're already going to be losing some time to their new mediums compared to our old ones but Piastri takes the lead off of us we're not letting that stand we're going to go to the outside and we're going to do what George did to Hamilton and slice off our teammate off at the banked corner as into the pits comes Lando Norris he's been in the battle with Piastri and Max Verstappen Max Verstappen pitting the same lap as Lewis Hamilton so what ties are um, McLaren thinking they're going to the hards they're doing the one stopper that was offered to me that the original strategy that we was going to do realising it now after the the team Mercedes pitting we're not going onto the hards now we're going to go longer and go on to the softs it's now we're still battling Piastri we're trying to break the toe a bit Piastri all over the back of us but he's too far back to do anything but now into the back corner he's having a go round our outside he's squeezing wide we tell him he needs to stop and just sit back there Team orders, we're really trying to enforce here. But into the pits comes Oscar Piastri now. And what strategy has the other half of the garage done for him as he trundles down the pit lane and into our pit box? And it's going to be the hard tyres for Piastri as well. So going the same way as McLaren. And because we've extended so far, the Mercedes have getting quite a bit of time on the rest of the field but where does he come out to Lando he's been beaten out by Lando who's actually behind his teammate Joe who I don't think has boxed yet but this is George Russell now on the back of his teammate once again and to the outside now going into the chicane round the outside goes George Russell now has the inside line and has he got the job done this time on his teammate? Surely he has. He, no. Yes, he has. He has got it job, job done this time. And now can he pull away? As Hamilton still has a look down his inside. But George now in a prime place. As we at the end of this lap, lap 16. We've kept these medium tyres alive just about. And we're going to box now for our one and only stop off the crowd breeze we nearly go straight on trying to get into the pits now where do we come out compared to Joel Russell and Lewis Hamilton if we trundled down the pit lane the two Mercedes have already gone through turn one as we enter our grid box we've lost a lot of time but going on to the softs hopefully we can gain this back through there the two McLarens and our teammates and also further back signs at Valtteri Bottas which puts us down into P9 and with George Russell leading the race George Russell's currently the 2025 world champion it's game on now to get back to P5 one at a time don't try anything risky that's all we can do as now Bottas and Carlos Sainz going well to wheel, Bottas overtakes Sainz before we even get to the chicane and us now with our fresh soft tyres and relying on them to get us into P5, 4 cards is all that's required then on the inside we go on Sainz into the hotel section we go a bit deep, Sainz tries to do the switchback but we really squeeze him and that's one down next up from Factory Bottas as now this is us on Bottas and we overtake there that's Piastri in fact on Joe getting past as it's in the background 
that mirror is still on the back of Bottas as we go through the chicane now try and get the exit up brand new soft tyres surely have the grip over the mediums on the Red Bull to the outside we go this is a great camera angle to go sailing round the outside of the back corner where the ultra game was we're up into P7 now as this is Fernando Alonso in what is his final race in Formula 1 not going too well for him as that McLaren with um, Aston was really really quick at the start of the season is now where we go to the outside of the McLaren of Joe and round the outside of Turn 1 you don't normally overtake there but we've done it and now there's not many to go as Joe Pitt so he was going longer and now we're on the back of our teammate this it's for P5 and for the championship surely to the outside we go on Piastri and we make him go defensive we then cut him back again and now it's just about the exit this may have if there was team orders we should get him out of the way but we don't need to do that we pull to the outside we're side by side now into the into the bank corner round the outside and that P5 puts us back into the championship winning position that we need it's now we lap a few cars and that how the tower we really helped holding up our teammate is now we're on the back of Lando Norris for P4 as we get closer and closer we're gonna go to the outside we're gonna do what we did to our teammate round the outside and job done and into P4 we go on the exit now come how far up can we get five laps to go so this is Piastri now on the way back of Lando Norris London Norris box very early on to those hards and it doesn't matter now anyway because he's pulling off and retiring from the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix on the penultimate lap of the season and that's made things very difficult for George because he would have would have needed us to be very overtaken by Lando and Piastri so as we run the final corner then to get on to the final lap of the season and the race we've got where we needed to be the soft tyres clinging on the strategy big U-turn this two stop not the way to go today the mediums lasting and the softs lasted much longer than originally we expected Mercedes 1-2 then George really pulled away from his teammate now Max in P3 we are P4, P5 is Oscar Piastri we're all very close to each other but we just couldn't catch the gap to Max Verstappen for the final podium place but this is Fernando Alonso on his final outing in Formula 1 and his final overtake potentially as he overtakes Charles Leclerc around the outside and moves himself up into P7 but at the front George Russell has done everything he needed to do he rounds the final corner to win the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix Hamilton P2 means Mercedes are constructors world champions Max Verstappen on the podium but as P4 means we are two times champions of the world in 2025 It's certainly been an incredible year for Formula One and our drivers have pushed themselves this season, making it one of the most compelling years of racing in history. There can only be one champion, however, and here they are now, our new Formula One World Drivers' Champion. Victory today then, but bittersweet emotions, I'm sure, as the championship slips through their fingers. Even so, what a fantastic final race of the season this was. How did they manage to achieve this win? I really feel the track layout, combined with the track temperatures we saw today, suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature, and the driver did a great job managing that as well. 
They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again. So that's been then the season New Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. We are two-time world champions. He thought was enough. George Russell did everything he needed to do, even if his teammate tried his hardest to deny him. And he was in the world championship winning position at one point after we pitted and dropped down to P9. We just didn't have the pace in Mercedes today. They were just too quick for us. My stop in getting the final spot on the podium then. P7 though is Fernando Alonso in his final race in Formula 1. Compared to where the car really was at the start of the season, probably not the greatest of results. He still points on his final outing in Formula 1. Got a couple of wins in this career mode along the way as well. The two retirements from the race, Lando Norris classified, but for Kevin Magnussen not and the one retirement from the race. This is how the championship finished then. We win the world championship by five points in the end. And bearing in mind where we were after realistically the first half of the season, when we had all those crashes and all those instances, did you think we'd get it all the way to Abu Dhabi and win it? Absolutely not. But George gave it everything. Hamilton got 182 points. Piastri finishing P4 in the championship. That's Fairly good on his part, even if he did spend half the season at McLaren, which McLaren's had a good car, but not quite where our Lamborghini is. Alonso has got 138 points compared to Lance Stroll's 33, and with Fernando Alonso retiring, that's a lot of points I've got to find from somewhere. So Aston Martin really going to have to go into the driver market next season to replace him. Many drivers still never scored a point in the end. This is how the constructors finishes then. That one two four Mercedes means they are constructors world champions by 25 points that one two basically summing up how good they've been this season to be fair we did very well to keep that going to Abu Dhabi as well past and just like out for Tauri they never scored a single point over the course of this season this is all the results then over the season you can see where everyone finished in each race all the fastest laps which we got quite a few of them we picked up seven wins eight pole positions we got eight fastest laps and eight podiums as well the teammates head to head for mercedes and it ended 11-4 to george russell across the wdnf in spa for the two mercedes in terms of our head to heads our head to head with michael schumacher ended 7-1 to us whilst piastri was our teammate we won the head to head by three aston martin's head to head then it was 11-5 to Fernando Alonso for McLaren then was Lando and Piastri were teammates it ended 4-3 of course we wiped them both out in Silverstone in that big crash also at McLaren then was Lando and Joe were teammates it was 6-2 over the course of those eight races to Ferrari now and Leclerc beat Sainz 12-3 over the course of the season they both had the DNF as well at Silverstone like just like McLaren Red Bull now so Max and Bottas level eight apiece over the course of the season neither of them won no so bit of a poor season for red bull to lp now and gasly beat ocon 11 to 5 to williams now and albon is absolutely levered logan sergeant 13 to 3 alfa romeo now and while Sonoda and Joe were teammates, it ended 4-3 to Joe. They both had a double DNF at Australia. Then when Fittipaldi came along, Sonoda absolutely levered him 7-1 to, to Alpha Tauri now. And Liam Lawson beat Fittipaldi whilst they were teammates 5-3. Lawson v Halga 
very much different story level after four races to Haas now and Nick De Vries was beaten 12-4 by Kevin Magnussen there is regulation changes for next season you can see them here now I've been in the background of these videos I have been trying my hardest to save as many as possible we haven't done that very successfully this time so maybe a big loss next season but let's not talk about next season just yet let's talk about this season because we are now a two-time champion of the world what a season that was see you next year